Good morning, everyone. I have my coffee. Come join me for a little while as we just, whatever happens, happens. You know, I don't, a lot of times, I don't know what I'm going to say next. But yesterday, I got a comment on somebody. It says, you said back there sometime or other about pretending you was happy when you was blue. So I'm going to tell you all about that. Because I was out in California, and I was crying, and my husband was overseas. I did a short on TikTok about it. But in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, The Bible verse, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he appears to be. So is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, where's my Kleenex? My nose is dripping like a creek. It's allergies. James is a lot better, thank the Lord. We went walking this morning. We lasted 12 minutes. And we said, we're hanging it up. When you don't walk every day, you get out of sorts. So I was tired too. Anyway, today I'm doing something different. When I was out in California as a young wife and my husband was overseas, he was in the Navy, and I went out there in California so he would stay in the Navy because he kept going AWOL. Don't you like my pretty pictures? I'm showing you the other one. I'll lean over this way so you can see it. I like my pictures. I got them at the Methodist thrift store. Two for five dollars. The color is marvelous. I just love them. Anyway, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so I was working in this factory with black folks, Mexicans, and a homosexual girl, which I have told you. She didn't like me. I just wiped my nose on my scarf. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it works. <laughs> my mother-in-law used to carry what she called a rag in her bra to, to wipe her nose with after I finally got her in brassieres. Because when I married number one, my mother-in-law is from down Appalachia, and she did not wear a brassiere. And I said, Mamma, and I called her Mamma, because the babies, my kids called her Mamma. I said, don't you think maybe you might feel better? Because let me tell you what, she was a heavy set woman and her her chest hanged to her waist for sure. So she, we ordered her some. And then after that, she just put a rag right around in her bra that she wiped her nose with. We used Kleenex this morning. <laughs> I used my scarf just a little bit, not much. It wasn't really that bad. Okay, so when I was out there in California working in that factory with, I see, I was so protected. I had hardly even seen a black person at, at that time, and they were everywhere out there. I mean, I even run into a, a, a sailor that was married to a black woman, and that was so shocking. To an 18, 19 year old girl, I thought, I didn't know they did that. Is that allowed? See, I'm from the South down in Virginia, and my daddy was very prejudiced and raised me prejudiced. I am not prejudiced now, but see, I had a lot to learn. I, I didn't think they were come down from monkeys like he did, and I didn't know they were human, and I enjoyed getting to know them out in California. I made some good friends out there. There was one lady that lived, a black couple that lived downstairs from us, and they had a little baby. And anyhow, she needed a transfusion. And so I didn't know white people could give blood for black people. But, but her husband says, would your husband want to give blood for my wife? She needs, they need donator, donations. He said, well, sure. And I said to him, can white people he said, well, yes, we're all human. Isn't that something? But that's how dumb I was because I was uneducated. I'm a little educated now. All right, back to what I was talking about. Pretend you're happy when you're blue. It isn't very hard to do. The little things you haven't got would mean a lot if you would just pretend. So Nat King Cole sang that song. And we played the radio. So I'm going to play you some Nat King Cole singing Pretend You're Happy When You're Blue. And we can listen together. 
he was a wonderful singer, and they let us play the radio when we was working. My job was, we had these alum aluminum window frames, and our job was to polish down these window frames with steel wool and make them shiny, and we did that. Now here's that King Cole. Pretend you're happy when you're blue. Can you all hear that all right? Pretend you're happy when you're blue. It isn't very hard to do. And you'll find happiness without an end. Whenever you pretend. Whenever you pretend. Remember anyone can dream. And nothing's bad as it may seem. The little things you haven't got could be a lot if, if you, you pretend. pretend. You'll find a love you can share, one you can call all your own. <laughs> Just close your eyes. Sing this melody. You'll be pretending just <laughs> like me. <coughs> Excuse me. The world is mine, it can be yours, my friend. So why don't you pretend? Now I'm gonna cut that off. <coughs> I'd have got a tickling in my throat. But what happened to me was when I heard that song, and of course I knew the Lord, but there is that scripture, you know, whatsoever as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. <coughs> so what I said was, I was crying and everything. I said, I'm going to quit that, and I'm going to pretend like I'm happy, and I'm not happy. But I said, I am going to be happy. I am going to work on it. I'm going to start being thankful for what I've gotten, I had a nice little apartment and the project like, and I could get books and I had a, a, a church I could go to. So I started counting my blessings and you know, my whole attitude changed. What I was telling myself was, I am so lonely, I am so this, I am so that. And that's called pity parties, which I learned later. So I quit having pity parties and saying, how are you going to make it? You don't have no relatives here. You don't have any friends except these acquaintances that you work with. So I made a friend of one of the girls that was working there. And we made a fine friendship. Come to find out her mother entertained the sailors for money. That's a fact, Jack. She was a full-time prostitute. And she did it at home. And she would just entertain them at home. And anyway, I didn't believe such things went on. But this girl confided in me that I made friends with. And her mother, this is a true story, got her in on it. And that child, she was 18 years old, she got pregnant. Yes, she did. And she knew I couldn't have babies. I had told her that I had been operated on and that the doctor said that I would never have any children because my ovary, my other ovary was so bad that it would never have any eggs. So when she got pregnant, she wanted to know if I wanted to adopt her little baby when she had it. Well, I had to tell her no because you have to pay the hospital bill and I never had no $1,500 or whatever it was. And I said, I wish I could afford that baby. And so when it was born, we were still friends and she told me, it was a little red-headed boy. Well, as time went on, and we moved back from California and came home, and I had, I had twins the first time, God healed me. And of course they came early, and I have told that story, how all that happened, you can check back on that. And don't you know, we had another little baby, Kimberly, who is now 65 or 66. 
and the twins are 70. But Kimberly, as a little girl, said, Karen, Kathy's got somebody. I don't have anybody. I want a brother. I want a sister. I need to have somebody I can be friends with. Gripe, gripe, gripe. That was Kimberly. She wanted a sister or a brother. So I said, okay, we'll see about getting you a brother or a sister. So we checked into the foster care thing. And they had a they had a family that had several kids and they had two, a sister and a brother that was needing fostering. So we passed the test that we could foster those two kids. The little girl was nine years old and the little boy was four. He had red hair. That's the truth. There was, and his name was Dennis Keith. What a nice name. So Kim just loved him. He loved us and he stayed and we, we kept him for several months and I told the people that we would like to adopt him, but the little sister did not work out. She was most unhappy. She just, she just did not work out. And I told the foster people, I said, she cries all the time, she's not happy. And so they said, well, now she's got an aunt, a sister to her mother. Her mother was handicapped mentally from a childhood fever too much temperature and she wasn't really retarded because of genes because all the kids and she had about 12 were really smart including my Dennis Keith that little girl was smart but she didn't want to live with me so her aunt Doris took her and raised her and she was happy so I used to let that mother come by and see Dennis and I let Dennis Keith know his family and his cousins and when he got grown up and was around 20 years old and on his own, he said, Mom, I want to thank you and Daddy for raising me and letting me know my family. And now he's a happily married man with the children and grandchildren. Look how God works things out. So y'all listen. Listen to Nat King Cole sing that song, Pretend You're Happy When You're Blue. It's on YouTube. And start telling yourself I'm gonna make it with the help of the Lord we do need the help of the Lord so I got a lot better I quit crying quit carrying on and having my pity parties and I've used that quite a few times since after number one passed away I really needed it because I grieved him really really bad don't pay no attention to the thing up on the roof I, I, I fixed that leak myself but guess what? I never did paint it, but it don't matter. We know it don't leak. That's the main thing, isn't it? I'm glad I got over that cough. James is well. He went back to work. I don't know what we're going to do today. But I think I'm going to go to the dumpster dive, which is the resale store. And i tell you what I'm doing. I got me some lipstick that's glossy. That's the only makeup I wear. And this one, the end of it broke off. I gotta get me some more. Grandma gotta take care of herself. And I don't like to get up too close because you can see all my wrinkles. I like to look good. And I did a video the other day that I'm thinking about deleting when I went outside and showed everybody my car. Don't look at that one, okay? Just please don't. Mm -mm. I like to look good, y'all. I don't like to look like where you can see all my wrinkles. I like to be camouflaged. What I really need is a facelift like Kamala Harris. She's got a good one, hasn't she? Did you see that Brett Byer put her on the hot seat and she didn't have the answers? I want to make it very clear. Baloney Maroney, she did not make anything clear. I watched it. You look at it. You can see it on YouTube. The woman is not smart. I don't want to be mean about it. I'm just being honest, she's not real bright. And that's sad, because we need a president that is real bright and can lead this country. Watch that, it will enlighten you. So anyway, I'm gonna say so long. It's been good to know you. Somebody said, I like your shorts all right, but I like it when you talk. Now, what did I talk about today? i tell you the truth. I am having trouble thinking of titles, and I'm going to tell you some more stuff. 
So I saw Andy have all them gizzards and stuff he could write on his on his iPad thing, on his YouTube. And you can get an app that does that. And so he told me which one to get. And I got it. And Mrs. Peach uh, told me in a comment that she had been doing that since the get-go. And she's been on YouTube for, I think, years. Long time. She's experienced. But she said she did it from the start. But it is a lot of work. I'm not going to do it. Grandma's lazy. They, I know it. I found out that it takes a lot of work. You just have to take me as I am. <laughs> That's life. We'll just be what we are. Yakety yak and don't talk back. Now, when my daughters started talking back to me, I got rough with them sometimes. I hit them with the hairbrush. It never hurt them. Taught them some lessons. You know, you just use a hairbrush on their butt a little. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. But my furnace has been out. I'm going to tell you a good one. Don't you know, over here at my house where I stay during the day, the furnace went out. So, James tried to light it, and he couldn't figure it out because he had never seen one like it. So, I had to call the plumber, or the furnace man. And this young man came over, and he said, I never saw one like that one. This one's really old. I said, well, how old is it? They can find the date inside. Now, this apartment was built in 1980, where I'm staying. It's in the rear of my three-bedroom house. But I like it here. But anyway, uh, he said, I never saw one like this one. He, so I said, well, look and see if you can find how old it is. So he looked in it. And he said, 1984. I said, 1984? I don't think that's right. I said, it was put in the same time as I, my air conditioning, which still works, and it's on the roof, and I have never added Freon or done anything to it since 1980. My air conditioning is great. I said, that furnace was put in the same time as my air conditioning. He said, well, I told James, and James says, do you realize how long that's been since 1980? I said, well, when we got this place, we dedicated it to the Lord, and I think the Lord's been taking care of it. I have never had to add anything to my air. It's never been worked on. My furnace one time, I think I had something replaced in it one time, but the both of them's been here since 1980. You know how long that's been? The Lord did another miracle. James says, you know that's a miracle. I said, yes, it's a miracle. It really is. And so, thank you, Jesus. We dedicate it to the Lord. You know, when we have a, a where it's built kind of on a hill, and so when the water comes down, I have to build a thing out there to keep the water from running in the house, and I didn't do that for a long time. And we put carpet in the bedroom. And it had flooded three times that I know of to where I'd have to take a vacuum and suck the water out and let it dry. Now my eye's itching. So I let it dry, and it would get dry, and I would just let it go. So when I married James 15 years ago nearly, he said, well, you know, we got to rip that carpet out of there. Uh, because you know it's mold and mildew underneath there, and that's not good for you to live with mold like that. I said, well, I can't smell it or anything. I've never been sick because of anything like that. And I said, but if you want to do it, because he has men that do that kind of stuff. So he brought a guy over, and they moved my bed, and they took the carpet up, and he said, what? My padding underneath it. There was no mold, there was no mildew, there was nothing. It was fine. So he said, well, we'll take it on out and put your new carpet down. Been down since 1980, that was 15 years ago. So he put me in new carpet. And that's another miracle of God. God's in the miracle working business. And I just expect more miracles. 
I'm expecting some of you all to really give your heart to Jesus right where you're at. You can do it anywhere. The pioneers had to do that. Grand, my grandparents used to have prayer meetings in their house because they were not near any church and had no way to get there. So they would gather up the neighbors and they would pray for their problems and pray for one another and read their Bible together. You can get in touch with Jesus and the Lord, Almighty God, the Heavenly Father, wherever you're at. So, Father, touch these people that are watching. Speak to their hearts and let them receive you. And that's my prayer. I didn't know this was going to turn into like a ministry. But it's just me telling you, you know, God is real and Jesus is real. And he did raise from the dead after three days. He gave his life that we might have life eternally with him. And my mom, when she was dying, was looking at the ceiling, and we was with her, several of us kids. I'm the oldest of nine. And I said, Mom, what, what are you looking at? You looking at angels, or what do you see? She said, no. And I thought, you know, you wouldn't think Jesus would take time off to come be with Mom, but she just kept, she was in, intubated and couldn't breathe on her own. So she couldn't talk so she kept looking and smiling and I said well are you seeing Jesus and she said yes you know she just kept nodding her head I said Jesus himself come to hold her hand escort her to heaven she was a wonderful woman and she prayed for us and her children and I'm praying for you all children and even you older ones when we was holding revivals, we saw senior citizens get saved, but a lot of them are hard cases. Of course, I met that little girl that told me she was an atheist out at the Walmart the other day and that she met Jesus all alone by herself. So it's possible. And the Lord let me know that through that little girl that she's 19 years old. She's going to church, going to go to church and check out youth groups, find her husband. That's the best way to do it. The Bible says not to be unequally yoked. And and I accidentally did that when I married Buddy. He said he was Christian, went to church with me good for about eight months. But God got a hold of him. He ended up a preacher, evangelist. We traveled full-time on love offering for 14 years. Pat Day, the jockey, gave us a 45-foot fifth wheel. It was one miracle after another. And you know what? Still going on. I'll talk to you later. It's been fun. And I learned how to turn this thing off without going cross-eyed. All I have to do is reach up here. Well, darn. Where is it? There is a way to turn this off without 